Hello, this is Dr. Joanne Manson, Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School and Brigham and Women's Hospital. I'd like to talk with you about the recent research, particularly randomized clinical trials of vitamin D supplementation and the implications for clinical practice. As a director of the vitamin D and omega-3 trial, VITAL, largest randomized clinical trial in the world, I'm often asked, um, how much vitamin D do we need and should I take a vitamin D supplement? And I want to um, review the findings from the randomized clinical trials and, uh, again, the implications for, for practice. Now, for a long time, vitamin D has been perceived as a magic supplement, a magic bullet, a panacea, and a cure-all for so many chronic health conditions, cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, bone fractures, cognitive decline, depression. Um, many of the findings, though, have been from observational studies where um, a higher blood level of vitamin D, 25-hydroxy-D, has been linked to a lower risk of these health conditions. And we do know in epidemiology that correlation doesn't prove causation. There could be other factors, such as people who have higher blood levels of vitamin D may have a healthier diet, or they may be spending more time outdoors getting sun exposure, but also being physically active. And some of these other factors could be lowering their risk. And then when the randomized trials began to emerge, many of these large-scale trials, um, the, the findings were generally neutral or null uh, for cardiovascular disease, total cancer, um, diabetes, cognitive decline, depression, and many, many other health outcomes, including even um, fracture. And uh, so the question was asked, does this mean that uh, vitamin D is not important to health? And on the contrary, I, I think that these findings suggest that vitamin D is so essential to health that we need only small to moderate amounts of vitamin D. And vitamin D is very tightly regulated in the body, the metabolism, the function of vitamin D. So even small to moderate amounts will meet um, the requirements for vitamin D and bone health and many other outcomes. This is what um, the Institute of Medicine, National Academy of Medicine, U.S. Preventive Services Task Force, and many other professional organizations have, um, have, have reported and have advised that widespread screening for vitamin D deficiency and um, supplementation, widespread uh, blanket universal supplementation would not be indicated. Now, the randomized trials of vitamin D, including VITAL, have generally not shown reductions in the major health outcomes. We had two um, exceptions in VITAL where we did see promising signals. We saw a reduction in autoimmune diseases, a 22% reduction in autoimmune conditions, including rheumatoid arthritis, uh, psoriasis. And we also saw a 17% uh, reduction in advanced cancers, uh, metastatic or fatal cancers. Now, the cancer findings have been seen in other uh, or a signal for reduction in meta-analyses of other large-scale randomized trials, but even with very small doses of vitamin D, even with only 400, 800 IUs a day, we tested 2,000 IUs a day um, of vitamin D in vital. So overall, I think the recommendations are that um, you know small to moderate amounts of vitamin D are adequate. Most people do not need to be screened or in the healthy uh, population to be screened or to uh, take supplements. Now, um, with the finding of a reduction in autoimmune diseases, there is a suggestion that vitamin D may play a role in tamping down inflammation. So the question has been raised, could vitamin D be a benefit for reducing severity of COVID illness, reducing um, need for hospitalization, reducing long COVID? We're actually looking at this question in a separate trial called the Vitamin D and COVID Trial Vivid, uh, testing a higher dose of um, more than 3,000 I use a day of vitamin D, and those results will be available end of uh, this year, early next year. Other randomized trials looking at COVID, vitamin D, have the results have been mixed um, and, and inconsistent, so there really isn't a clear answer. However, during the COVID uh, pandemic, I have been generally advising that it's reasonable to take 
1,000 to 2,000 IUs of vitamin D just as a form of insurance in that uh, that dosing is known to be very safe over more than 5.3 years. In um, the vital trial, we saw that 2,000 IUs a day was, was very safe. So this would be a, a reasonable dose during, during this time period, but it's not essential to take a supplement. And overall, um, aside from some high-risk groups, most people are really not in, in need of a supplement. Now, the high-risk groups include people who are in nursing homes and may have restricted diets and limited time, and limited if any time outdoors, people with malabsorption conditions such as Crohn's disease, celiac disease, post-gastric bypass surgery, and people with osteoporosis on medications uh, for osteoporosis bone health problems is still quite reasonable, very reasonable, to, um, to be prescribed calcium and, and vitamin D for those patients. But our recommendations for the generally healthy population really should be focusing on having a healthy diet. Uh, the U.S. Is, has a fortified food supply. There is vitamin D added to um, many foods, dairy products, and uh, many cereals, as well as other uh, as well as beverages. Um, and also there's some natural sources such as uh, fatty fish and wild mushrooms. So we should be looking at the food labels, which now include a vitamin D content and trying to get adequate vitamin D uh, from, from our diet. And also doing our best to spend time outdoors, being physically active and, and, and physical activity is of such great benefit to our health. So the general principle um, is that a dietary supplement will never be a substitute for a, a healthy diet or healthy lifestyle. And, and those other um, behaviors really should be the focus at this time. Thanks so much for your attention. This is Joey Manson.